Hey y'all, hope you enjoyed the video last week with my wife going through a flower haul. This week we're going to be going through a vegetable haul. Although I wanted to make it a little bit special. See, me and my family, we all love history. That's part of the reason we got the school from 1919. So I'm going to add a little bit of history to where the seeds came from, where the plants were cultivated first and all that stuff. So I hope you enjoy. First off, one of my favorite greens besides dandelion is arugula. It's an edible annual that's from the brassica family and it's native to the Mediterranean region. With a nutty, sweet, bitter, and peppery flavor, this complex tender leaf packs a punch. Maybe that's why the Brits call it rocket. It was mentioned by various ancient Roman classical authors as an aphrodisiac. For this reason, during the Middle Ages, it was forbidden to grow rocket in the monasteries. It was listed, however, in a decree by Charlemagne in 802 as one of the pot herbs suitable for growing in gardens. It's now grown commercially in many places throughout the world. Throughout Italy, it's used as a salad with tomatoes and either burrata or bacconcini, similar to a caprese salad. It is also eaten in Turkey raw with olive oil and lemon juice. Next up, we have beets. The sea beet, or beta maritima, which grows wild on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, and it is the predecessor of the modern beet. In its uncultivated form, the root of the sea beet is coarse and unfit for food. On the other hand, beta vulgaris, or the common beet, as well as the flavicins group, or stocky Swiss chard, are quite lovely to eat. Yes, beets and Swiss chard are from the same species, but are bred for different parts. The beet, mainly for its root, and the silver beet, or chard, for the juicy stalks and tender leaves both which I find quite tasty. The beet, when roasted, is sweet, earthy, and complex, a far cry from those nasty pickled things you find ubiquitous at salad bars. Swiss chard can be a nice substitute for spinach, kale, or many other greens. It is tender, bright, and slightly salty. We will be growing sabeto, a red beet, goldstone, a golden beet, and kyoga, a candy striped beet, all from Johnny's. Now we're growing something sweet this year, berries. We got these two from Baker Creek. Chichicalites and Schwarzenbaren. Chichicalite is often called a garden huckleberry. It is a plant in the nightshade family that produces small purple black berries. Grown in the low Sonoran Desert as a Mexican garden berry, this variety originates from West Africa. The ripe berries, eaten raw, have a mild sweet tomato flavor with floral notes, but when cooked it has a flavor that's reminiscent of blueberry pie. It is great for syrups, cobblers, and preserves. We got ours from Baker Creek. Schwarzenbaren, literally blackberries are a type of edible black nightshade from the Solanum nigerum family. They may be eaten as soon as their skins turn from shiny to dull and from green to dark purplish black. Although the flavor is fairly acidic, it is sweet when the berries are ripe. They were brought to the Americas by a group of Mennonite immigrants from Russia in the 1870s. One of the dishes they made was called Kuchen, which is German for cake. Traditional Kuchen is like a delicious mashup of cake and pie, topped with uh, creamy custard and fruit. You might think that cake is cake no matter where in the world you happen to be eating it, but it isn't so. German cakes are often quite different from those that we're familiar with. In fact, German chocolate cake is an American invention. It was first made by a Texas woman, Mrs. George Clay, a homemaker from Dallas, Texas, in 1957. Named for a chocolatier by the name of Samuel German. Sorry for the rabbit trail, but if I can squeeze in some Texas history, I'm gonna do it. We will also be growing broccoli. Happy Rich from Johnny's, to be precise. Broccoli has its origins in the Roman Empire and was most likely improved via artificial selection in Sicily, quite possibly one of the most healthy foods on planet Earth. Brought to you by Sicily. Next time you see a Sicilian, thank them. Did I mention some of my wife's family is from Palermo? That was a fun wedding. Broccoli was brought to North America in the 19th century by Italian immigrants. After the Second World War, breeding and hybridization in the United States and Japan increased the yields, quantity, and growth speed. This one is supposed to head in as little as 27 days. That's insanely fast. It also grows through the summer. I can't wait to see how this one does. Carrots and I have a love-hate relationship. I love to eat them, and they hate to grow, but we'll see how they do this year. Dacus carotta most likely originated in Persia or modern-day Iran and Afghanistan and was originally white or purple and cultivated for its leaves and seeds. In the 11th century, a Jewish scholar by the name of Simeon Seth described both a red and a yellow carrot. Dutch growers bred a denser orange carrot from the yellow varieties in the late 15th century, eventually becoming the carrot that most of us know and love today. This year, I will be growing three kinds. One is an experiment, the new Corotta from Baker Creek, touted as the best tasting orange carrot that they have tried. Also from Baker, Uzbek Golden. It is said to tolerate heat well. 
It was a free pack they sent me with my order. If you haven't ordered from them before, shipping is always free, and so far I have received at least one pack of seeds that was free with every order. The last one, and probably the one that I'll grow the most of, is Atlas, or Parisian Carrot. A great variety for shallow soils, which is what I have. It is also said to be very sweet and great for snacking. I got this from Kitazawa Seed Company. Rainbow Chart is up next. I got the seed from Johnny's. I do really enjoy them, the greens especially. The stems add a nice crunch to most dishes and the color is vibrant and brilliant. Bok choy, or Cantonese for white vegetable, evolved in China, where it has been cultivated since the 5th century. In the 12th century, bok choy was imported to Korea, where it was first made into kimchi. Its history in the United States is closely linked with Chinese immigration to California in the 1800s. Today, in Singapore, where vertical farming is a burgeoning industry, commercial growers are enjoying great success with this vegetable. It is responding well to 30 foot high stack condition. I got this Joy Choy from Johnny. It is a heat tolerant variety, so I'm hopeful that it will do well in Texas because my ramen bowl needs it. Cucumbers. Cool and refreshing on a hot summer day. Cucumber is one of America's top five Five garden vegetables. Native to India, cucumber is another one of the most ancient vegetables. Cave excavations have revealed that cucumber has been grown as a food source for over 3,000 years. Cucumbers were cultivated and eaten in ancient Egypt as evidenced by the Bible. Numbers 11.5 reads, We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic, the Egyptians made a weak liquor out of the cucumbers by cutting a hole in the ripe fruit, stirring the inside with a stick and liquefying it. Then they would plug the hole and bury it in the ground for several days. Don't try this at home. The Emperor Tiberius was said to demand that it be on his table every day. Columbus is credited for taking cucumbers to the New World, along with many other vegetables. He introduced it to Haiti in 1494. In the 18th century, Medical journals warned of the dangers of eating cucumber and other vegetables that were not adequately cooked. The setback was short-lived. By the 19th century, the cucumber regained its popularity. In the U.S., cucumber's popularity was bolstered considerably when in 1876, Henry J. Hines added pickles to his list of products. In the 19th century, pickles were a tasty addition to the monotonous diet of meat and potatoes consumed by most americans the largest cucumber ever grown was 67 inches long and weighed 154 pounds the inside of the cucumber can be up to 20 degrees cooler than the outside hence the saying as cool as a cucumber this year we are growing unagi from johnny's last year we grew and it was a hit it can grow up to 14 inches long. We're trying out the Mexican sour gherkins this year as well. A unique specialty cucumber. One inch long fruit looks like miniature watermelons and tastes like cucumbers with a tangy citrus overtone. Super pumped to taste these little guys. Eggplant, aubergine in French or mulanjani in Italian, originated from India and China. Spanish Moors introduced the eggplant into Europe where it became very popular. Eggplant made its way into the Americas in the 1500s, but never really caught on. Many Americans thought that they were poisonous. From the 1500s all the way to 1960s, Americans only knew the big purple eggplant. Only recently have Americans embraced the extensive varieties grown in India, Italy, Japan, and China. We are growing three kinds this year. Artusa, a white eggplant, Negral, a black improved Italian type, and Anina, a purple striped Italian type, all from Johnny's. What, that kale? Scientists disagree about when humans first tasted kale. It is known that the ancient Greeks cultivated these leafy greens in the fourth century BC, which were boiled and eaten as a cure for drunkenness. By the way, my drunken kale recipe can be found in the link below. Kale is actually a descendant of wild cabbage, native to Europe and Asia Minor, and is recorded to have been grown and consumed for nearly 4,000 years. Kale was in fact one of the most widely eaten green vegetables in the Middle Ages, when the Italians, Scots, and Russians all began to grow different varieties. Kale became such an important food in Scotland that the local Scottish dialect used the term kale to refer to food in general. The Scots used phrases such as, come to kale, as an invitation for dinner, or off one's kale to imply that one was ill. <coughs> Today, kale grows well in California, Georgia, New Jersey, Texas, and the Carolinas. We will be growing red Russian kale from Johnny's and an improved Siberian kale from West Coast Seeds. We grew both last year and they did excellent. Do me a favor and squash that like button. Okra, as a member of the Malvaceae family, it is related to such species as cotton, cocoa, and hibiscus. Young okra leaves may be cooked in a similar way 
to the greens of beets or dandelions, or used raw in salads. Okra seeds may be roasted and ground into a caffeine-free substitute for coffee. When importation of coffee was disrupted by the American Civil War in 1861, the Austin Gazette said, an acre of okra will produce seed enough to furnish a plantation with coffee in every way equal to that imported from Rio. The plant was introduced to the Americas by ships plying the Atlantic slave trade in 1658, when its presence was recorded in Brazil. It was further documented in Suriname, South America in 1686. Okra may have been introduced into southeastern North America in the early 18th century. By 1748, it was being grown as far north as Philadelphia. Thomas Jefferson noted that it was well established in Virginia by 1781. It was commonplace throughout the southern United States by the 1800s, and the first mention of a different cultivar was in 1806. Of the 43 cultivars grown in North America, we are growing four this year. Jing, an orange variety, burgundy, the traditional red, Burmese, which is a longer spineless variety from Baker, and jambalaya green, which is a traditional green from Johnny's. Parsley. The name parsley comes from a Greek word, petros, which means rock. Because it thrives on rocks and walls, parsley is native to the Mediterranean region of southern Europe and has been cultivated for more than 2,000 years. The ancient Greeks held that the plant was sacred and parsley was never placed on their tables. However, the Greeks used parsley to decorate tombs and made parsley wreaths to bestow on the winners at the Isthmus games in the same manner as bay wreaths honored the Olympians. The practice of using parsley as garnish has a history that can be traced back to civilizations of ancient Rome. Parsley was placed on the tables and worn around the necks of those at feasts because it was thought to absorb the food odors. It was even believed that chewing the leaves would make the odor of garlic completely disappear. We are growing a giant Italian variety from Baker this year. Capsicum plants, or peppers, originated in modern-day Bolivia. They have been a part of the human diet since 7,500 BC. They are one of the oldest cultivated crops in the Americas. The first pepper seeds were carried to Spain in 1493, and from there spread rapidly throughout Europe and the rest of the world. Today, peppers are eaten by a quarter of the Earth's population every day. Most peppers found in the U.S. and almost all sweet peppers fall under the species Capsicum annum. Capsicum annum, the ancestor of most of the peppers commonly consumed today, was grown in pre-Hispanic times in parts of the arid southwest and Texas as well as in Mexico. We are growing two Italian frying peppers, Corno di Toro, or Horn of the Bull, a red one and a yellow one. Both are very sweet. I like them raw or cooked and those ones we're getting from Johnny's. We're also growing a red bell pepper called Yolo Wonder from True Leaf Market. Archaeologists discovered the oldest domesticated pumpkin seeds in the Oaxacan Highlands of Mexico. Pumpkins are believed to have originated in Central America over 7,500 years ago. The first pumpkins held very little resemblance to the sweet bright orange variety that we are familiar with today. The original pumpkins were small, hard, and had a bitter flavor. Rather than using their nutritional and readily available seeds, pre-Columbian natives grew pumpkins for their flesh. They are among the first crop grown for human consumption in North America. Thanks to their solid, thick flesh, pumpkins proved ideal for storage during cold weather and times of scarcity. Now we carve them up, stick them on the porch, or launch them hurling through the air from a trebuchet. Although I prefer mine in pie or soup. Those other alternatives seem a little wasteful. We will be growing six kinds this year. Blaze, which is a little striped one. Marina di Chiocha, an Italian favorite for many dishes including gnocchi, ravioli, and other pasta, both from Haas. Yardale, a slate blue pumpkin, comes all the way from Australia. Mousquet de Provence, or fairy tale pumpkin, is a mainstay of southern France. It is beautifully decorative, and its sweet flesh is also sold in the markets for cooking. The porcelain doll, a pink version of Yardale, both from Johnny's. And last, but certainly not least, Dale's Atlantic, which has been grown up to 2,702 pounds, 13.9 ounces. Damn! That is a big pumpkin. That one comes from Kitazawa Seed Company. Radish comes from the Latin word radix, meaning root. Radishes originated in China. The genus name Raphanus is a Latinized version from the Greek expression Raphanos, which means easily reared. The first written records that mention radishes come from the 3rd century BC by ancient Greeks and Romans. In the Middle Ages, in both Europe and the Orient, a fascination with giant radishes was created. Giant radishes were described in Germany in the 13th century. A German 
German botanist reported seeing a radish that weighed 100 pounds and it was 3 feet long in 1544. In China and Japan, most of the radish crop is pickled in brine in much the same way that we pickle cucumbers. Both the roots and the green tops are quite good to eat. I like them sautéed best. We grew French breakfast radishes from Johnny's last year and we will grow them this year as well. We find them tasty and less spicy than most. We are also planting Red King from Johnny's this year. They are sweet and sometimes grow to be over a pound each. We are also growing Bora King. They are a beautiful daikon with purple flesh and skin. When they mature they can be up to 10 inches long and weigh up to 3 pounds. Shunkyo is a smooth, deep pink, cylindrical shaped root with crisp white flesh. They are an average four to five inches long. The flavor is both hot and unusually sweet. With edible, smooth, strap leaf foliage and rhubarb pink stems. They come from Kitazawa Seed Company. Scallions, cultivated since 3500 BC and native to Asia. Scallions are one of the earliest cultivated crops. They are also called green onions, spring onions, Welsh onions, salad onions, and Japanese bunching onions. The word scallion can be traced back to ancient Greek. Ascalonian, this name in turn, is believed to originate from the name of the ancient Canaanite city of Ascalon. Scallions, like other alliums, such as shallots and leeks, are a part of the lily family. We're gonna be growing a red variety and a green variety from Johnny's this year. Delicata squash was first introduced by a seedsman in the US in 1894. It is a very sweet variety with a thin edible skin and is typically cut and roasted. Delicata almost disappeared after the Great Depression. It wasn't widely grown due to its susceptibility to mildew diseases. Cornell's Bush Delicata is resistant to most known squash diseases and won the 2002 All-American Selection, or which is a seed industry award. And this variety is the variety that we will be growing from fruition seeds. Patty Pan squash belongs to the Cucurbitaceae family. However, contrary to the appearance, it does not belong to the same variety as winter squash but that of zucchini, and are similar in flavor. The French name for patty pan squash is patisson, which comes from a cake baked in a scallop edge mold form. Patty pan squash is one of the ancient, often forgotten vegetables that fortunately is making a comeback in markets and garden plots today. We are growing three varieties from Johnny's. Jeanne Verte, which has an attractive light green fruit with dense flavorful flesh and are perfect for stuffing. G-Star, the fruits are dark green and more ribbed, and Lemon Sun, which is fully yellow with a tulip shaped fruit. Zucchini, or courgette, has its origins in Mesoamerica the part of North America extending from central Mexico through Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and northern Costa Rica. It appears that zucchini as we know it was developed in Italy around the latter half of the 1800s and thought to be reintroduced into America by Italian immigrants in the 1920s, first cultivated in the U.S. and California. Introduced into the Old World's cuisine, along with many others, after Columbus's first voyage in 1492. Among these are corn, beans, squash, cocoa, vanilla, potatoes, tomatoes, bell peppers, and chili peppers. The ones that we're going to be growing this year are from Johnny's. One is called Dunja, which is a traditional green, and yellowfin, which is a yellow summer squash. Tomatoes. The wild ancestor of the tomato is native to West South America. These wild versions are the size of peas. The exact date of domestication is unknown. By 500 BC, it was already being cultivated in southern Mexico and other areas. Tomatoes come from the Nahuatl word tomatal, meaning swelling fruit, fat water, or fat thing. Spanish conquistador Cortes may have been the first to transfer the small yellow tomato to Europe around 1521. It was not until 1555 34 years later that tomatoes were named in print by Marioli as pomodoro or golden apple. The history of tomatoes in Italy dates back to at least the 31st of October 1548 solely as a tabletop decoration until it was incorporated into local cuisine in the late 17th or early 18th centuries. The first tomato recipe to be published was in Naples in 1692. Man, those Italians, they're the original foodies. We are growing cherries again this year. Black strawberry from Baker Creek, amazing color. Sun gold, a super sweet and a little bit less acidic tomato as well as the cherry bomb, which is a traditional red. I save the best for last. Turnips. Well, at least I think they're the best anyways. Wild forms of turnips and its relatives, the mustard and radishes, are found all over Asia and Europe, starting as early as 2000 BC. Edible turnips were possibly first cultivated in Northern Europe and were an important food in the Hellenistic and Roman world, with Pliny the Elder considering it one of the most important vegetables of his time. 
The turnip eventually spread to East China and reached Japan at about 700 AD. The Hakurai turnip is a newer root vegetable variety that was developed in the 1950s in Japan in response to the food shortages from World War II. They are also sometimes called Tokyo turnips. The leaves of the Hakurai turnip are amongst the most delicious of the root vegetable leaves and are best eaten sautéed. Hakurai are surprisingly delicate, almost fruity in flavor, and their crunchy texture accounts for their popularity. They are delicious raw, and you can try shaving them into salads and slaws with thinly sliced apples or pears. When cooked, they develop a buttery flavor, and when roasted at high temperatures, their sweetness increases. Recently deemed the keto potato for their low carb count, we are growing two from Baker Creek, Hida Benny, a red turnip, surprisingly crisp, sweet, and mild. The white and red fine grained flesh makes this a top eating salad turnip. Nagasaki Akari Kuba, a turnip traditionally grown in lovely Nagasaki, Japan, and of course, the Hakurai that I got from Johnny's, which I think is the Cadillac of turnips. Do me a favor and squash that like button. Thank you for watching our video, and we hope to see you next week.